I grew up an ASU fan uh, when I was a little guy. I would sit in the knothole section in the north end zone in the temporary bleachers. And I watched ASU football all through the 60s and got to finally go to ASU and play there. And ASU was getting better and better every year through the 60s. And there was a need for ASU to someday get recognized to be in a bowl game. But in those days, there was only 11 bowl games in 1968. ASU and U of A were overlooked so many times to go to even a, a modest or minor bowl. There was great frustration among community leaders. And that was my reason for doing it. I was with the newspaper and we were trying to get more people to move here, if you could believe that at that time. And I came here with 300,000 people, so you can see there's been a lot of change. But we wanted to have the events to use ASU, to develop the, the nobility of ASU, and to honor their football team. And Frank Cush was a great coach, and we just wanted to make sure that we were on the national scene. So they sat back and decided, why don't we create our own bowl game? And that was the birth of the Fiesta Bowl. pleasure here tonight, and that is to invite the most exciting football team in America to play in the Fiesta Bowl this year, Arizona State University. And we accept. We went around the state a little bit and tried to sell the bowl to people from outside of Phoenix to come down, and uh, so we were kind of trying to sell it as a, this Pioneer Bowl game and to please support it, and it's an Arizona Bowl game, not just Phoenix. We were a great state that was underplayed. Florida called call himself the Sunshine State. My God, look at Florida, it rains there all the time. <laughs> but we had more sunshine than anybody, so we wanted to talk about the great benefits we offered to other people to move here. And I didn't realize how many would move here, as it turned out. <laughs> Well, I remember it being a day game, and there weren't a lot of day games in those days in Arizona uh, because of the heat and everything else, but it was an exciting atmosphere. And to play in front of our fans, we knew we were going to have a packed house, and whoever came here was going to have to deal with the Sunday. In my office is a picture of the first Fiesta Bowl, and there are probably as many people on the mountain as there are in the stand. Well, people got really excited. First of all, you've got to remember in those days, ASU was the only show in town. There was no professional football. There weren't a lot of professional sports teams here. So when game day came, they were sellouts. And it was 50,000 each time. And it was, it was remarkable, a great environment. People were pumped up to see them play. They beat the Big Ten every year when I was there. They beat Kansas State one year when they were ranked. So it was a lot of fun. People got pumped up and couldn't wait for game day. You have the super softs. You had Benny Malone, Woody Green, and you had Steve Holden. Tremendous speed and strength. And blocking for them was so much fun. Because all you had to do was scrape and turn your back to them, and they'd be gone right through us. All exciting. They had probably the fastest backfield in the country when you looked at all those players. Everybody thinks about a big passing game, but their running was unbelievable. They had people that would uh, average over 100 yards a game, it seemed like. And that's, that's the kind of team we had. We were so explosive. And so I just concentrated on getting the ball to, to Woody, to Benny, to Steve, to Joe, um, and they took it from there. Well, the Fiesta Bowl has always been one of the more exciting bowl games. It's always been high scoring. It's always been exciting. It's always come down to the very end, just like the game in 1971. Came down for ASU winning in the last minute. Took a four minute drive, scored the last touchdown and won the game. Up at Camp Tanazona, we were working as hard as we would the first of the year. So we didn't get much of a way of a break that way. Regarding Frank Coach Cush, he was this little Polish man, he was maybe 5'8", but we all kind of feared and respected him. It was a different era and you know, authority in those days to young men was everything. Having Frank Cush as a coach, number one, you didn't make any mistakes. You weren't allowed to make any mistakes. Growing up, my brothers and I, we'd go to practice and we'd watch this five foot eight, five foot nine guy handling these, you know, six foot plus, 250 pound guys, you know, and go, ooh, that's a pretty bad man there. You don't want to mess with him. Ooh. 
really was a very different sort of fella. Not, not very, what you call, smooth, <laughs> very tough guy. What a football coach could be. But he had a lovable heart and he had a great, great belief in the university. He wanted to play better teams. And that was our goal, to get other teams to come and compete against him. So, by playing the Fiesta Bowl, he gave an observation of what ASU really was. So, the schedule became much better. Finally put ASU really on the map uh, for ASU to win the first three Fiesta Bowls in 71, 72, and 73, beating Florida State, beating Missouri, and beating the University of Pittsburgh. If you look at the history of our, our, our school, and you look at some of the players, we got a lot of guys in the pros. And finally they were getting their national recognition that they had never before. And of course we were very proud of our record. We only had four losses in those four years, 70 to 73. It was just exciting to have such a record and to, to boast about it every year after that. There was a strong brotherhood feeling among the teams I was on at ASU. And to this day, there, there's a lot of these guys that I still see weekly, 50 years later. The, the hike up to Cushions Mountain going to Camp Tonazona. Those are things that put us together. And when you win, it only makes it sweeter. To go 11 and 0, 11 and 1, 11 and 2. I mean, what kind of college career is that? I think going to Camp Tonazona and all being in one room, we had two big rooms, one for the offense, one for the defense, and we slept and ate and practiced all together for two weeks. We were up there for, for 10 days to two weeks. Uh, and it was a great, great experience because we all faced great challenges. In the era that we came up, even through the, the trauma, through the the world of violence that goes on, this group stayed together as one.